aviate attack jet. An aircraft flown and maintained by the U.S. Marine Corps Aviation Wing. Its unique feat of engineering and piloting is called V-STOL, vertical and short takeoff and landing. It's meant to support Marine ground troops deep in the combat zone, where runways might be damaged or non-existent. But the plane's V-STOL capability has come at a terrible price. Measured by its major accident rate per 100,000 flight hours, which is the military standard, the Harrier is the most dangerous plane in the U.S. military. Overall, the Marines have lost more than one-third of the entire Harrier fleet to accidents. 148 major non-combat accidents in its 30-plus years of service. Billions spent on repairs alone. Worst of all, 45 Marines, including some of the Corps' finest aviators, killed during peacetime. In Marine Corps aviation, I don't know of another aircraft that took the toll of time, money, and lives to perfect its operation. Unlike most engineering disasters, the Harrier's failures did not occur in a single catastrophic event, but rather over the fleet's long lifetime. And while the Marine Corps has stuck by the Harrier for over 30 years, the need for an airplane like it can be traced as far back as 1942 and the fierce jungle combat on Guadalcanal. But the Marines felt that the Navy left them to battle the Japanese and malaria and lost a thousand men in that combat. Since then, the precept that the Marines in the air should protect Marines on the ground has been a central part of the Corps' ethos. The Marines continued to fight some of the fiercest battles in U.S. history. And they continued their search for an attack plane that could provide close air support in the worst of conditions. Flown by Marines and for Marines. In the 1960s, they thought they'd finally found it in an experimental British aircraft called the P-1127 soon to be renamed the Harrier, after a bird of prey. So when the British developed the Harrier, the Marines were immediately interested, and in fact, one Marine general who flew the plane early on described it as an answer to a prayer. In 1970, the Marines placed a large order for the jets with the British manufacturer, Hawker Sidley. By May 1971, active Marine units began flying the Harrier, now called the AV-8A. The AV-8A was a notoriously unstable plane which had a tendency to roll over and slam into the ground. It had an astronomical uh, major accident rate. One month after being rushed into duty, the first fatal crash occurred. Collapsing landing gear, fuel tank malfunctions, and jammed control sticks were among the causes of fatal crashes. In addition to malfunctioning equipment, the AV-8A presented steep challenges for pilots. While manning the control stick, rudder pedals, and throttle, a Harrier pilot also had to learn to control the four nozzles that provide the thrust for vertical flight, all while keeping an eye on the wind. There's no doubt that under the best of circumstances, the Harrier is a challenging plane to fly. I am always very skeptical when the U.S. military blames something on pilot error. Far too often that's not the real cause. The real cause is in the design. And uh, if the design is a very difficult design to work with, uh, no amount of training can overcome uh, those uh, weaknesses. The AV-8A was also frustrating for mechanics. When it came to the heavy maintenance, we found ourselves short and special tools and the special slings and adapters measuring devices for that aircraft. We just didn't have it. Early on was a disaster. The AV-8A's difficult design and persistent mechanical flaws contributed to a disastrous first decade with annual accident rates as high as 57 per 100,000 flight hours. By comparison, the F-A-18, while a more conventional aircraft, had an accident rate of only 8 per 100,000 hours in its worst year. In the early 1980s, the Marine Corps introduced the retooled Harrier AV-8B. Its larger wing was designed to provide better stability in flight. 
greater engineer intake and a new avionics suite to improve navigation were also added. The accident rate for the AV-8B has been considerably lower than the AV-8A, but it remains far higher than the comparable contemporary attack and fighter jets flown by the Navy, Air Force, and Marines. The AV-8B was first introduced to the fleet in the mid-1980s, and by 1996, nearly a quarter of them have been destroyed in accidents. Half of the Harrier's 148 major accidents have been connected to problems with its powerful but temperamental Rolls-Royce vectored thrust engine. Repairs and maintenance are complicated by the fact that the Harrier's engine is exceedingly difficult to access. To do a full engine changeout on a Harrier can be over 500 hours of labor, whereas in other military jets it can be a day or a half a day, uh, part of a day, to do the same thing. The Harrier's frequent groundings and time-intensive repairs have created a catch-22 for many pilots. They can't log enough flying hours to stay sharp, which leads to more accidents, which leads to even less flying time. In 1997, they brought back a former training squadron commander, and he found that some of these pilots, inexperienced pilots, were getting only four or five hours a month, which he said was not enough to fly a Cessna, never mind a Harrier. Renewed scrutiny has focused on the Harrier's record in combat. In the 1991 Gulf War, the Harrier flew over 3,300 missions, but also sustained the highest casualty rate of major U.S. combat jets. Five of the seven AV-8Bs that took enemy fire were destroyed. The Harrier's attrition rate was three times that of the A-10 attack jet, and seven times that of the F-16. Again, what made the Harrier special also made it vulnerable. Infrared seeking missiles, We'll see the big engine from the Harrier, it is very hot, and so uh, surface-to-air missiles with infrared secrets on them will go right for that engine. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, the Harrier, now outfitted with laser-guided weapons that allowed it to attack from higher altitudes, performed admirably. None were shot down, but a nagging question remained. Was the Harrier necessary? What we saw in Afghanistan and in the war in Iraq was airstrikes conducted from great distances with precision guided uh, bombs and missiles. So I think a lot of the use that the Harrier got uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq was sort of giving it a fair chance to show what it could do, but you'd be hard pressed to, to, to show that uh, we couldn't have done the same things other ways. While Congress, prompted in part by a series of articles in the Los Angeles Times, investigates the Harrier's latest spike in crashes. The future of marine aviation is focused on the plane that will one day replace the Harrier, the Joint Strike Fighter. The Marines model of the JSF, although it won't have the Harrier's distinctive v stole ability, will have short takeoff and vertical landing capability. And it will be outfitted with advanced flight control software to take some of the burden from pilots. An airplane that matches the Marines' mission to fight anywhere, anytime, and get out alive. The Marines hope the JSF will surpass the performance of the Harrier. Without the same toll in money, material, and most importantly, lives.